Hello and welcome to Lucky Sweetheart Vintage, the place where kitsch comes to play and fabulous finds around every corner. In today's video, we're gonna talk about one of my absolute favorite subjects, and that is milk glass. We're gonna do a complete milk glass 101 video where we talk about the history of milk glass, how much we can get it for now, where we can get it for, who's making it, and, um, and I will show you my entire milk glass collection as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the history of milk glass. So milk glass was actually created by the Venetians, by Venice, in Venice, Italy in the 16th century. And when we think of Venice, Italy, or at least when I think of Venice, Italy, I think of glass and their beautiful glass works. So milk glass was not just white. It was all different colors. We're talking about greens and blues and purples and reds, and it was absolutely magnificent. Can you picture what some of that work looked like back then? Um, so then the Victorians um, during that entire period uh, looked at milk glass and they saw it as a cheaper alternative to porcelain. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to make and it looked similar to like the Wedgwood and the things that were popular during the Victorian time. So the Victorians brought it back and they began making it for things like their creamers and their, um, their uh, vases and it stayed and it remained as a cheaper alternative to porcelain for many, many years. Now, um, when we think of like the Americana version of milk glass, we're thinking about like the 1950s and the 1960s going into the dime stores and being able to pick up a milk glass vase for a dime. And in fact, this very vase is from my grandmother and it was probably picked up at a dime store in the 1950s, which is so cool when you think about it. So milk glass during its entire history has been the cheaper alternative, a good looking piece that's less expensive. But at the same time, there's so much luxury when it comes to milk glass. There are so many examples of really beautiful, really ornate pieces that are milk glass. So it kind of has those, the double sides. It can be very luxury and beautiful and costly, and it can also be the cheaper alternative. So when you think about that, it's really cool because milk glass kind of like has a life of its own in that way. So that brings us to our next point, which is how much can you buy milk glass for? Well, let me give you a few examples. So always in anything that we buy, maybe you know this already, but when something is signed, it's automatically worth more because, you know, people can identify it and it's just a little bit easier to um, figure out how much something is worth. And usually that means also that it's going to be more. So when something has a name on the bottom of it, or an identifiable mark on the bottom of it, it's going to be worth more. When something is unsigned, it's going to be worth less. Um, talking about these two pieces, these two, this one is signed, but uh, what does it even say? Brody Co. So do you even know Brody Co? I don't know Brody Co. I've never heard of this company before, but obviously it was a glass maker. And um, this one isn't going to fetch top dollar for that name. And this one doesn't have any name whatsoever. So if I was gonna price out these two items, right now I'd say that this one is maybe about 10 bucks, eight bucks, something like that. So um, prices change all the time, milk glass, uh, is, is in and out all the time. If you think about like depression glass as an example, 20 years ago, that stuff was so expensive and so hard to get. And now it's being sold ridiculously cheap. Milk glass is kind of in one of those in-between stages where it's not the least expensive thing that you're going to find online, but it's definitely not commanding um, what it could. Although, like we said, these, these items were definite you know, dollar dollar store, dime store items, um, and they're still worth something now. They're strong, they're durable, they're beautiful looking. Um, look at the design on this. This is, you know, think about this. The, it, the dollar store, these, these were from essentially. And look at all the beautiful um, detail on that. So um, 
that's that. I also have this piece to show you and then we will get into my entire collection, which I can't wait to show you. Um, but this one is, uh, I believe this is a Fenton piece and it's from my grandmother, but it's unmarked. So Fenton was one of those companies that they kind of, for a while, they were just putting the sticker on the bottom and I'm not exactly sure what years that was, but Fenton, they were putting the sticker on the bottom for a while, um, instead of carving the name in, um, and of course, when you look at this, this is the Fenton hobnail with the crimped top and everything like that. So it's a really pretty item. So this is going to command more because it's part of the hobnail connection, collection. And in fact, I will say that when it comes to value, that anything by Fenton, anything of the hobnail collection, there are quite a few other collections um, that Fenton is known for, that those items are going to command a little bit more attention and money and everything like that. Um, so I'd be interested to hear what other questions you have about milk glass. Um, and if you are a milk glass collector, um, what is in your collection? What do you look for? Do you look for colored items? Um, cause they have really some beautiful colored items or do you just look for the plain white milk glass? Um, I actually have a really beautiful black milk glass, um, uh, dish set which I absolutely love. So um, let me get into the my collection. So this is my entire white milk glass collection. And I'm really excited to show it to you because a lot of these pieces look like they're the Fenton hobnail. Some of them are authentic uh, Fenton hobnail from that collection. And others are either repros or were made at the time to mimic um, the Fenton hobnail look, but are not actually authentic um, Fenton hobnail. The ones that I know for a fact are um, part of the Fenton hobnail collection, the ones that are from my grandmother. Um, and those crimped plates that you saw just a couple of moments ago, we know that those are Fenton as well because it says it on the bottom. So it's just very interesting, but this is my collection. I love them. I love showing them. And um, it's just a pretty thing that I have year round up in my house. <laughs> 